week's Monkey Nut Punch podcast. And I was perfectly in time then because I did want to talk over the music. Hello, people. I'm not interrupting. I just wanted to let you know I didn't hear you. You came in halfway through. So did, was that the same okay. for you, Nigel? It's the same for just, me. Yeah. We'll me. see you in the recording when it comes through. Hmm. All right. So welcome to this week's Monkey Nut Punch podcast where we will be talking about the triumph that is uh, Bilbo Baggins in space, uh, Boba Fett. And we'll be talking about um, Microsoft vying for supremacy, I think is the best way to describe it, as they bought Activision. And I thought about it, and, and I've got some thoughts on this one, some really good ones. And um, then we're going to talk about Death in Paradise because it's the only BBC TV show worth watching. It's fun. It's proper light entertainment. It's enjoyable, and I know Nigel's probably watched the latest episode. Nigel. <laughs> there we go. Um, right, so the first thing I want to talk about is I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about Boba Fett because it's crap. It is. I, I can safely say now, with 100% certainty, it's crap. Um, but the thing I found interesting is, is someone pulled out a clip from an interview on NME where Tamira Morrison is speaking to um, whoever's interviewing him. Um, Oh, sorry. Wrong button. I put to the share one. They've slightly moved things around. So, um, so, and I just want to play the clip and then we can talk about it after. So this is the clip that we've got here from, from the interview. I'll just add you on stream. So Tamira Morris, I think he's going through what I would describe as um, a Mark Hamill moment where he talks about... Um, I was hoping that. not to say as much as I have already in the first two episodes. I speak far too much. In fact, in the beginning, I was trying to get past my lines on to Ming-Na. Yes, and I always say, excuse me, excuse me, director. Uh, I really feel that Ming-Na should say these lines because I want to stay mysterious. Right. I want to stay uh, quiet. But then I, I caught be... on. He wasn't, he wasn't just trying to be a very generous actor, which he is. He was just trying to parlay some of the work to me. <laughs> All right, I'll end it there. But... Um, I'm tracking my bloody mouse here, but um, it's it, it's clear that the guy, it, like Luke Hamill, loves the character. Yeah, yeah, he, he wants him to be mysterious. He wants him to be a, a badass. Doesn't want him to be this chatty fella. <laughs> he wants to be him to be a fellow of like action and stuff. And I think he's. I think he loves Star Wars to the point that if you if you came you came up to him and asked him to come back and do a really shit Boba Fett thing, he would because he loves it that much. But I think he I think he, if you look at him the way he's talking, his eyes are shifting around. He wants to, there's more clearly more that he wants to say when he's when he's talking, and um, yeah, it's uh, I feel sorry for a poor bastard. I'm going to be honest yeah. with you. I feel sorry. For, I, he's, he's been set up like Mark Hamill. We said, oh, you get your own TV series. He went, yes. And you think about it. When you saw him in The Mandalorian, you saw him, he comes in, he kicks the shit out of all the stormtroopers, yeah? In that uh, Rodriguez episode. And all of a sudden, that shit's not happening. All of a sudden, he forgot that he was in his armour when he left the Sarlacc pit. Yeah? So instead of doing the sensible thing, which I thought he was going to do, is fly up to the Sarlacc pit and fucking bomb the thing, and say, fuck you, yeah? Which would have been a badass moment. And we would have gone, great, well done, yeah, go Bubba. No, no, he insists that it's in there. Only to be saved by a woman. Oh, hang on a second. Surprise, woman. Because that's what Disney does now. And then there's another thing floating around about how they don't want them to use guns in Star Wars. What? Seriously. Oh, oh for fuck. Think yeah. about how many times... They've used guns in Boba Fett. Yeah, that's true. There's they the train. Bare, the, yeah, barely. There's the train. Mm. So you got someone like Robert Rodriguez, yeah, who you say to him, hey, Robert, make me a Predator. Oh, you've already made a Predator film for me. Okay, it's all right. But yeah, he's already done it. Yeah, he's quite a productive fella. And, he, you know, he gets a good understanding of what's going on with, with, with things. Predator's probably a fucking bad example. Sorry, Predator is probably a bad example. But but you feel that he would have done more, especially when you you know that he he was given a what was it a, a nine page or seven page script for that episode of The Mandalorian, and he had to fill in the blanks. Yeah, it's like kind of what the fuck. Yeah, violence. It just has violence ensues in brackets. 
and then he has to sort it out. So <sighs> Boba Fett is is it, I, I I like Tamara Robinson. I think he comes across as a, as a nice guy. I think he he likes it. They they don't understand the crime lord. They don't understand the even lord aspect of it. Yeah, he should be getting out there kicking ass and taking names. Yeah, what he should have done like it's the thing with the Wookiee. Yeah, fucking yeah. furry bastard turns up to kill him. Yeah, he should have killed him. Yeah, he should have yep. killed him, or he should be, or it should be like a fucking Guy Ritchie film. Yeah, where. He know, already knows the Wookiee. The Wookiee's a friend of his already. The Wookiee goes to kill him. They make out that they fight. He then pretends to beat said Wookiee up. Yeah. And then the Wookiee goes back to the fucking huts and then turns on them at the last fucking moment. But no, not, not even clever writing. Oh. There's a bit in there where he says that. Sorry. There's a bit in there where he says that he wanted to go and talk to, to the director and says, look, I think Noah or whatever his name was. Um, I, I, I think this is wrong. Can we change this? Yeah. He goes, he knew that John Favreau was on a fucking plane flying to Atlanta. So he asked him to change it. In the morning, it's cool. And John says, no, no, do all the talking. Yeah. So John's not even writing it properly. He's not even putting his, investing his fucking full time in it. Boba Fett is an anti-hero. And they're trying to turn him into a hero. That's what No, Boba like. Fett is a villain. He's a villain. He, and they want to turn yeah, him into an anti-hero. They want kind to turn of, him into an anti-hero. Yeah. I don't know. I think he was kind of an anti-hero in some ways. A lot of people sort of... There's always been that sort of... I wouldn't say he was all-out villain. There was this thing around Boba Fett that he wasn't an all-out villain. And then certainly Lucas, when he did the prequels, gave you a bit of a sympathy arc towards him because you saw his father and his father was murdered in the um, in, in that ring. And then he he sort of escapes. So you you had that some sympathy for him. So I would say he was almost an anti-hero. But they're just turning no, him into uh, no, a, no, he was, no, no, around he was, out, he, he was an out and out villain. He fucking was clever. He could fucking out fox people. He was he was a villain. Yeah, that, I, I well, think whatever, that's, he, that's, whatever he was, he's yeah. now trying to be. They're trying to make him into a hero, and that doesn't work. Yeah, they should make him into an anti-hero. Mm. Yeah, this is the bastard. What they should have done is they should have made him into an absolute bastard, yeah? And at the end of it, someone's hired the Mandalorian to kill Boba Fett. And then that's the next series of the Mandalorian, is the Mandalorian trying to kill Boba Fett. Because yeah. that's a fight I would like to see. That's yeah. interesting, but we're not getting interesting. Because that would that's involve it. guns. That would involve two male people fighting. That would involve the, hang on a second, we can't play a trump card of surprise woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Disney. Disney don't, the the don't don't do don't do this kind of thing. It's all fluffy and light and Disney esque. And the closest thing they've done in the Star Wars world to becoming less fluffy and light was Rogue One. Um, Can I ask you a favour, Keith? Can you just put the microphone a bit closer to your mouth? Sorry. So the closest thing that they came to do in 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 Star Wars was was you know Rogue One was probably the least fluffy thing they've done. Um, yeah, but... But Rogue One was completely forgettable. Uh, yeah, well, I like Rogue One. Oh, um... no, no, no. Because... Right, right, okay. All right. Name me a scene that isn't the Darth Vader scene that you went, oh, that's really fucking cool. I liked the, 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 the dogfights uh, as they, they come down to the planet. And I thought the um, that was quite cool. And when they're sort of going through the shield ship and stuff like that. that was but that wasn't, cool. the, that wasn't the people acting... Was it? Uh, no, I mean, okay, yeah. Look, um, some of it that was, was interesting. It was, it, it was in it. I, I would say that it was more interesting that it expanded the universe than anything okay. else. Yeah, I liked Rogue One. Yeah, I um, liked it better than any of the other three films that came out around the same time. You know, any anything I, I, with I, the, I, I, uh, you know. Um, the Force Awakens stuff, uh, it was better than those. I got a feeling that the original cut was probably darker and probably more interesting because we know that they changed it at the end. They know we know that in on in the end, there's there's a scene where a fucking tie fighter tries killing them on the top of the um the tower, which was cut, which is in all the fucking adverts. Um, that would have been awesome because that would have been like, having a tie having a fight with a tie fighter face first. <laughs> Person versus Tie Fight. That's something we haven't seen, but we'd like to see. But no, 
we didn't do that. The thing I remember is K2SO4, the, ro- the, the robot by Alan Tudyk. He's just his kind of Drax like kind of thing. And then the bit where the blind guy believes that the force is with him and he walks out in front of the, the gunfire. Yep. Yeah. But everyone, <laughs> everyone you know, all the normies will turn around and say the following. It was a Darth Vader scene at the end. And I'm just like, yes, but there's, there's there's the scene where they where they attempt to rescue the um engineer father. Um and you know th- there's that whole scene. Th- th- there's bits in it that I genuinely like and, th- and found interesting, and the companion novel to it. it. They expanded on the mythos that film. You can argue that the film wasn't particularly great, but they expanded on the universe. They added to the Star Wars universe far more than anything else that Disney has done, including the Mandalorian. But we had um, the extended universe that did that too, and I think the extended yo, universe yes. done that job. But but it was we haven't seen that extended universe on film. So in in, in um um I I'm, we're not disagreeing, Tenet. Um, I'm just uh, I I just feel that 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 film did something that not everything did, if that makes any sense. So um, but I do agree with you. The extended universe is far richer, um, which mm. Disney promptly cancelled when they bought Star Wars. Um, but and they didn't they even do the sensible bring... thing. They didn't do the sensible thing and saying, "Right, what we're going to do now is we get the extended universe and we're going to start cherry picking the best bits from it." And that will they be are it. doing that because that Wookiee character is from comics, and those are pre Disney comics. Is he a Dave Filoni creation? I don't think so, but I might be wrong. But I know he is from the okay. comics. But they're bringing back but, but his, more his... part as well. As so... Akbar to say it's a trap. No, the the blue guy, and they did cast. They did cast who I said they should cast. They did do that. I'm, now, I'm not even I, sure I, it's going to reach. I'm not even sure it's going to reach there, Keith. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm not even sure you're going to get to that point, given everything that's going on and the fact that that every this is the lowest rated show. And as I said, Tamara Robinson seems like a nice fella. Um, I think it, it, the. I mean, without going into the too much of the political side of stuff, I think things are finally beginning to crack um you just have to look at what's going on but how, how long is that going to take to to come through when they oh, realize that I they think can, it's coming through they can I have, mean, you a, have... A, a male a, a male lead that doesn't have to be talked down to by a woman or gunfight but i think all of Star this woke, Wars. there are signs that this woke stuff is beginning to end um you have a without again i'm not going to go into the politics but i will say this a U.S. vice president that has technically been the wokest in a long, long while, lowest rated in in a very, very long while. It says a lot. It says a lot about what is happening. People have had enough of this shit. We're about to get Picard season two. Now, <laughs> let's face it, they, I, they put this trailer out and the trailer had Whoopi Goldberg and we got the member berries and people were posting it, but I went, but remember season one of Picard? I mean, you thought Discovery was bad. By God, Picard took oh, a God. steaming dump on Star Trek. At least Discovery. I mean, okay, it was. Just, it, it, right, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Storytelling wise, it was worse than Discovery. That's a fucking mean feat. Before you get into the canon ruining stuff, just if you just took it as a story on its own, it was crap. Here's the thing we're about to get Picard season two. In, in March. We're getting the Orville season three soon, right? You're gonna have Orville on, which Oh is March tenth in the US. And then you have Picard. Bad Star Trek. Orville, fake Star Trek, but good. Picard, real Star Trek. Fucking pants. What's gonna happen? I mean I I, I, I do feel that we're going to see some changes this year. Spider-Man, you know, Marvel have had an absolutely shocking year in films. Spider-Man 3 comes out. What is it now? The seventh highest rated Marvel film? It's overtaken the Avengers, and I know it was it was it was coming up on two two billion. Um which Marvel have only made twenty five percent of thanks to their new deal with Sony. So Sony are fucking sitting there with 1.7 billion dollars after Spider-Man All right. 3. So and you know what that 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 1.5 billion dollars from Sony takes us perfectly into our next section. Um uh, let's have one in. You're listening to the Monkey Nut Punch podcast. 
I'm starting to get used to my melon. I've been playing with my melon. I love my melons. Um, it's just getting because it's got a whole new setup on melon rather than on stream stream uh, stream yards. Um, okay, so big news this week. Yeah, um, it kind of came from out of nowhere, and a part of me has done the same thing I did when they bought Bethesda. Microsoft have purchased Activision Blizzard for sixty nine billion dollars and change. All right, so sixty nine billion dollars and change. I like saying it because it just sounds funny. All right, so they bought it. And I'm like going, oh, wow. Because that means they'll have all those Activision games. And my brain went, Call of Duty and... What other games do Activision do? <laughs> and I'm like, you could have just bought Call well, of Duty from them. That would have been a 10... Uh, yeah, you know, but they were... 5 billion for... They... You know. Okay, so uh, it's Activision Blizzard. So Blizzard, obviously, is the Diablo games. Call of Duty, yeah. World of Warcraft. Okay, so so here's the next question. Nice. What's happening with the Diablo games? They're they bought here. out something. They're supposed to bring out a mobile game that hasn't come out. Uh, Another Gareth, one supposed to have Diablo out. is absolutely massive here. There are mm. gaming channels. I've got like four freaking gaming channels on our um network TV thing. All it no, is but is I'm talking about. But even bigger YouTube, than that is StarCraft. Yeah. Yes, even bigger with that. Even and bigger. is there a new Asia StarCraft Asia? game coming? I thought I thought I be. saw a trailer for another StarCraft game because I thought I saw some space games trailers no. and there was StarCraft. Yeah, that was, was probably mentioned. Warhammer. That was probably um, Warhammer. See, this is the thing: is all, right, all of Blizzard stuff has stagnated. Yeah, it's on a slow it's on a slow path down. Okay, so poor Microsoft now have to get what. Get the, the 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 rotten cusk husk of Blizzard, and get them to start making fucking games. Because War, World of Warcraft, remember World of Warcraft? Everything was huge on World of Warcraft at one point, and we had that South Park episode and everything. And it seemed to go on forever. Uh, that's dead. Yeah, World of Warcraft was fantastic, but we've got all these things that, that you need. You need a StarCraft three to come out. You need the, the, never the, the new Diablo game to come out. Yeah, Diablo four is in the works. Apparently, Diablo 4 is in the works. Yeah, you mentioned the mobile game, and that has been on early access for about however many years. So that may never come out, or it might at some point. That's, Who knows? See, that's the problem. Is Microsoft now have got to come in and fix this shit. Yeah. They've got a ton of stuff. This is, this is before you get to HR. <laughs> right? And we know but, that HR is an issue at fucking Activision Blizzard. All right. Well, they did say so you got they... all that Blizzard shit. All right. So let's now go look at act right. So you've got King, Candy Crush. I don't think anyone plays Candy Crush around here anymore. Don't you play Candy Crush? Do you know anyone plays Candy Crush? I, uh, I think you play the water I... sorting puzzle. I don't you play Candy know Crush. anybody. But um the King, King they, they make all sorts, don't they? They haven't just bought yes. um Candy Crush. They they King, no, I'm no, but Candy Crush was the the the, the big revenue thing, and they got lots of like offshoots of that. Yeah, so they've got all these bits. Yeah, I think King's probably in the best position out of all three of them. All right, we've got Blizzard. Yeah, who have trouble making fucking anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> remember 2018? What do you mean you haven't got mobile phones to play our, our microtransaction laden version of Diablo? Yeah, remember that? They have they're fucking clueless now. All right, so they've got poor Microsoft. They've got to go through that, and they've got to fucking rip certain things out root and branch to get the machine up and running again. So Blizzard, I think it's it should be a prestige thing, but it's not. I feel bad for Microsoft for buying this. Well, they, it was say, they, they, put out, they had to put out a statement saying that, that uh, Call of Duty is staying on the PlayStation. They they they're staying with Sony. No, they can't. They can't afford for it not to be on the PlayStation. Yes, exactly. Was yeah. I was going to say they were making out look. Oh, you know, don't worry, we're going to keep it with it. It's more like you can't afford it to come off the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, you can't afford at the moment because they've got to make that money back. Because Microsoft are notorious for killing things quickly, and they it's like uh, remember uh, Age of Empires the. the the, there's a company that made Age of Empires, yeah? Uh, and they killed their studio off literally, I think it was like six months after they released their last game. And then they had to then bring, I think they then had to revive part of a, another company and then to put them forward like that. So you've got Microsoft who kind of eats developers like Unicron from the Transformers series. And then you've got Activision who treat people like shit, including their customers. So you've got devs and whatnot. So Call of Duty is a big standout thing. What other Activision properties 
that they're currently making. Can you can you reel off the top of your head? No idea. You are, you are right. I know that the 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 as I said that there are certain games that I know are quite big. I still see Candy Crush on lots of phones here. Mobile gaming here. Asia is a big market for that kind no. of thing. Um, but King, I don't. I'm, I'm having a little look. Um, they've made a few things like uh, obviously Candy Crush, but then they've made Bubble Bubble Witch. It's probably one of those shooting yeah. balls into a color thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Farm Heroes, um, Candy Crush, uh, Friends Saga. There's something called Knighthood, a turn turn based As I said, play RPG. So it's not a huge amount got... of uh, selection there, but they must they must be doing well. I think I mean, that like... out of the ones that they bought, they were the ones in the best shape. I got a feeling that they may sell King off. Because it's not inside their kind of Microsoft kind of ecosystem sort of thing. And they can make a good chunk of cash from They could probably get about $10 billion out of that sale. Um, you never know. So, yeah, we've got that. So, so I'm just reading a, a quick article on this. And um, they bought, basically they bought the shares out. And it was $95 a share. That's what they bought Activision Blizzard at. $95 a share. That's how they bought them out. Okay, so... That, that, which it, is probably it, it's funny because uh, this is one this... so is it, yeah. I, was, I was thinking it's probably that's a low share price because of what's been going on over at activision mm. with bobby kotek and all that stuff so they thought yeah, oh, right. now's the time to act share price is low we've had our eye on it a while this isn't going away it's just getting worse share price is decreasing let's get in there let's get this now it's the lowest it will ever be I know what yeah. he's talking about. I know what he's talking about. Right, explain to me. Right, Keith, explain to me this. Boba Fett, Chapter 4, Rocking Tits. No he's either talking about the the bird with the weird, um, the one that we think is the actual baddie. Yeah, because it will be Surprise Woman. Yeah, it is. We surprise. Know she is the baddie, and I've seen her before. I think that must be what he's talking about. Uh, ben, explain yourself. Um, but... Um, I think that must be what he's talking about. Was there any, any other boobs, tits? Um... Right, hang on a second. Right, I was about to bring this up, Bilfer, because yeah, the Coof did funnel a shit ton of money to Microsoft, and I, and all that money I, that my business spent on Teams meetings, it's definitely but funded them buying Activision. Net, the net, is... Netflix put out their their, their um, earnings and their their subscribership is got. <laughs> As absolutely, yeah. um, yeah, they're in well, cause we're coming, not cause, trouble because but... we should be coming out of this. shit, That's why, mm. so everyone's looking I... at it, goes, Oh, and I was gonna be doing this. The thing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, anyway, go I back mean, to, that... the, to the Microsoft, mm. go back to my because we're talking about the Microsoft team. No, 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 was, some, was... Someone spent this right now. There's something I want to make you guys aware of. Yeah, we know how we like we hate woke, shit. We really hate woke. shit. Yeah, it's something that we look at and we go, oh, for God's sake, can you just keep this this away from me? Um, I want to show you something from a Microsoft presentation that should have you quaking in your boots when you find out that they're going to have a, monop a monopoly on video games. So, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully you should be able to hear this. Manager in our developer tools division. I'm an Asian and white female with dark brown hair wearing a red sleeveless top. And I'm Seth Juarez, Program Manager in the AI Platform Group. I'm a tall Hispanic male wearing a blue shirt, khaki pants. Today we kick off two days of learning more about the latest solutions, exploring how these key innovations can empower you to do great things, and connecting with peers from around the world. This is what you're what? doing. This is what I want you to do. Hello, everyone. I'm Natalia Gadilla. I'm a Caucasian woman with long blonde hair, and I go by she, her. I'm a product marketing lead here at Microsoft and co-host of the podcast Security Unlocked with this guy. Yes, that would be me. Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Fillingham. I'm a Caucasian man with glasses and a beard. I go by he, him, and I'm a security evangelist here at Microsoft. Right. <laughs> but why? Um, what? Why do they need to describe themselves? What does it matter about what they look like and who they identify with? If they're doing a good job, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well done, Bill Fuck. Um, <laughs> Microsoft, um, 
I'm hoping it's not in the games division. Phil Spencer doesn't seem to come out with this shit. Oh, we've lost Keith. We have lost Keith in the first. At least hilarious... it's on a happy face. Hang on a second. I think I'm gonna just I'm just gonna screen that's being screen grabbed. That's going on a tweet. All right. Uh, so uh. um I don't know what's happened to Keith. You have to remember that his internet is above ground. Yeah. <laughs> Which means so he's a, he's got internet it. above ground, which means it's it's susceptible to storms and birds. So he can have it as fast as he wants. If a bird fucking sits on that cable, it's game over. That's anyway, it, going yeah. back to the Microsoft thing, yeah, they bought all this stuff. I was having a look at the uh, the, the the what do you call it, the Activision site. The only game I can see on it that isn't Call of Duty is Tony Hawk skateboards, which they don't do anymore. Yeah. And Crash Bandicoot, which was previously a Sony game. They've got Spyro and Sekiro. Oh, they've got Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. So they've got a total of five games that they're actively in. Yeah. So, uh, Doom, they, okay, so looking back over uh, in the past, and let's remember, Microsoft uh, Series S and X is really good for backwards compatibility compatibility mm -hmm. they could revive or get them revived um some of the older older games so like you said could, uh, so you've got Sekiro however you've also got things like uh prototype which isn't that old mm -hmm. but Spyro Dragon that was on PlayStation right I don't know if it was on any computer else. crushed yeah oh, we okay. know. <laughs> It was the it was the, it was the best picture when you when you crashed. Mate. Look, I smacked the desk and the whole thing just went black. So I missed the whole explanation as to why they had to explain what fucking and and what pronoun they go by. I don't know. It's right. <laughs> it's because they've gone woke. They've got they they dipped into identity politics to the point that a t-shirt can be a gender. <laughs> I, I, I blame Biffa for why my computer because I smacked the table laughing so hard at his um his last comment. So that that's why it's your fault, Biffa. My, my, my whole computer crashed because I smacked the desk and the whole thing's like I, I I need to do one of those videos and just say I identify as an attack helicopter. Yeah, I go by oh, it. Why do they have? Is it a death thing? I, because why do they say I'm wearing a blue T-shirt? I mean, is it a death thing? Are they describing themselves? Colorblind thing? It no, or... a colorblind thing. Yeah, oh, I can't fuck it. Doing off. It. it could be for blind, really? for blind really? people. Now here comes a funny thing. Right, right. Just going back to that that ignite presentation. That ignite presentation is for two people in a business organization. You've got the devs and the IT professionals who will sit there and they'll pay attention to all the technical stuff. Yeah. And then you've got the person in purchasing, yeah, who's the person who has to listen to this so they can sign off on it, so they agree, they understand what they're buying, okay? The person in purchasing has fallen fucking asleep. The persons doing the, the, the technical stuff aren't interested in your gender politics. They want to know, yeah, you crypt the gra graphic keys up to 256-bit or whatever, yeah, and it's fantastic, and we, we're going to now use uh, NFTs for... Uh, office licenses. That's the that shit they're interested in. Yeah, they know that you're a woman. They know that you're wearing a shirt. They know that you've got hair. Yeah, and they can read your name on the fucking screen. And if they can't read the name on the screen, they ain't buying your product. But that's my worry when it comes to Microsoft purchasing Activision with their five games <laughs> because they've only got five fucking games on. The yeah, we, I was I was looking over these. It's right. so There's let's not just get this right. Yeah. Right? This is the thing that gets this. Sorry, Nigel. This is the thing that gets me. All right. They bought, um, what do you call it? Uh, Bethesda. Yeah. How many games did Bethesda have in their catalog, active catalog? Fucking loads with new ones coming. And how much that made that? sense? This doesn't make that much sense for that much money. It's Call of Duty they're after. They yeah. should have just is bought it? Call of Duty from them. Is it? Or is there something oh, okay. we just don't know about? Right. What, where do they get a value of $69 billion? Are they bought the share price? Well, it's not. But... I'd be honest with you. It's not the fact that well, they look at the share prices and they say, ah, oh, the share prices of this um, will pay extra on each one of the share prices. That then pushes it up to sixty nine billion. Uh, they then do a calculation that says, hey, um, could we get this money back in the next five to twenty years? And they go, uh, yeah, we can get this back money back in the next I mean, five I mean, to twenty years. 
Disney had bought like Star Wars for four billion dollars, and I swear to God, it was more popular than Activision games. But maybe I'm wrong. Well, okay. Um, right. The I've, rumor, I've hang come on across a uh, one game series that I believe is probably quite big, and it's Total War. Is it? Is it active? Yeah. Total War Sega. There's... Total War Warhammer Three is coming out in 2022. The That's last under, one under the Sega uh, last one that came out was in 2020. I'm sure Total War is under Sega. Let me see. It says Activision. Oh, maybe it was bought by Sega. Oh, yeah, that, I missed a small print. Sega. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's sure it Sega. You see, bought. for me, if Total War was in it, that would represent a nice now, chunk. Right. But it's not. Now, this it's is actually the, under Sega. Right, hang on a second. Hang on a second, Nigel. This is the rumor. Yeah. You are right. Phil Spencer's looked at active. Phil Spencer's looked at Activision. He turned around. There's a lot of old, older properties which they've killed off. Yeah, which we can then add to the Games Pass. Yes. Yeah. So all these older Activision properties can now become part of Games Pass. So they buy their back catalogue for all intents and purposes. The downside with this is I like Games Pass, but the the big problem with Games Pass is that it will slowly destroy the fucking gaming community the same way um streaming destroyed music and streaming has is now slowly destroying the music uh, movie industry too yeah and the reason is that, that remember when we had um uh what's it oh the metal band what's the metal band metallica metallica this is a fucking metal band M metal alica um metal band metallica and they were against um uh napster yeah, because they were downloading MP3s. Yeah, right. So there's a big thing in the early 2000s because people were torrenting these things, downloading them. It devalued their their brand and their music and everything, etc. Mm. So they then started going, well, it, why don't we do this in a more controlled thing? There's clearly a market for this. So lots of ones started up. The big one that stuck out was Spotify. So Spotify came out. So what happens when everyone has a Spotify subscription? Everyone stops buying CDs. Everyone stops buying MP3s. Everyone just has the subscription service. No one buys anything. Yeah? And it's the same with games. So games can't make as much money as they would have. So you go to films. Yeah, you've got the films on now. I've got DVDs upstairs in my loft. Yeah, and I will watch them on streaming. Sorry, I've got DVDs in front of my TV. That's it. And I will watch them on streaming because it's easier to press that on the remote control button. Yeah, I can still get the box out and popping it in and pressing play and all that nonsense. I will watch it on on uh, on streaming, and it's going to get the same way. It's going to become a similar thing with games. Now they talked about the metaverse, yeah. Um, and if the metaverse is going to be run by Facebook, it's going to be shit. Yeah, it's going to be shit. Okay, no one likes Facebook. Is slowly dying, and they don't want to say it is. Yeah, Instagram is doing more than than thingy. Twitter is dying too. These social media platforms are going. They think they've got influence. They think it's gonna last forever. But that's why all of a sudden he rebranded to Meta. The stocks were taking a bit of a nosedive. He needed to unveil a new project somewhere they can have more growth. And that's where he came Meta. And and the rumors are that 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 um, everyone in the US, even Disney, are buying into this metaverse bullshit. Um, I think it's more likely to take off than NFTs. Because NFTs are fucking horrible. Uh, they're yeah. stupid. There's no stupid thing in the world than an NFT. It makes me want to slap the buyer around the face. Yeah. The problem is I can't slap the person who's selling it because it makes perfect sense from my angle that you could sell someone a, a digital picture that they can download for free. Um, <laughs> but we'll give them a cryptographic key that says that one, that one, that one there that can be copied. Is theirs and it's ours is bullshit. Anyway, I, I, I digress from NFT. The long and the short of it is, uh, if Microsoft, I don't think, can buy EA because there's a monopolist commission thing that will go on there or antitrust or whatever they call it in the states. And I think they kind of reached their limit. Um, I think the exclusive maps and stuff um, on on Xbox is now going to be a permanent thing. Sorry, PlayStation owners. I got both, so I'm fine. Um, but I, I, but at the same time, Sony um, may be looking at uh, releasing certain things on on Xbox. I think might become a possibility from now. So things like I think the first one will be Spider Man, 
Um, and the reason I say Spider-Man because of um, the nature of the agreement that they have with Marvel, because they own the rights to, to the movies and to the games. And I think they've owned the rights to the movies and the games since the PS3. Um, no, before the PS3, sorry, because they put the Spider-Man font on the PS3 to show how much they, uh, they've bought into it and how much they own it. And uh, even though they did make $1 billion from um, Spider-Man No Way Home, it's still not 69 point, uh, sorry, 69 and loose change for um, for uh, the uh, whatever thing was being done on, what's it? I have a dry mouth. It's now difficult for me to talk and I've run out of juice. So, you got anything else you want to add to that before we move on to Death in Paradise? No. Um, no, not really. I just think it's absolutely bonkers. It's a crazy price for what seems to be not very much that you're getting for that value. So it's a silly purchase in my opinion. I, I, I when you go to the Activision homepage, yeah, and, and you go to the say the Bethesda. Actually, no, let's 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 pull this up before we go, yeah. So let's go to the Activision page and let's go to the Bethesda page, yeah. Bethesda Let's actually need to pull up Bethesda. So Bethesda with all their all their stuff. Bethesda. All right, so Activision page. Let's have a look at what gems Activision have got for for us as the consumer. What have we got for them? Bump, bump, bump. All right, so so this this is about. It. So we've got an advert here for Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time. Um, and then we come down here. All news. Activision. Call of Duty. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and 1 and 2, so they must be remasters. So they're even proper games. Yeah. And uh, Crash Bandicoot, it says there. Yeah, but yeah, it's ironic because that was a Sony property. Yeah, so we just got looks of uh, da, 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 Ricochet, Any Cheap, blah, blah, blah. If you, if you, more if you, if you click on the, uh, got... the games section, we'll see what they've got currently available. Because well, if you go down here, I'm just going to. Hang on a second. Games. So, I, so it's like Call of Duty, 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 Call of Duty Tiny Scolts, Tony, Tony Hawks, Skater, um, Crash Bandicoot, Sekiro Thingy, uh, Shadows Die Twice, Spyro, Sorry. Crash Bandicoot again, Call of oh. Duty, Call of Duty, Skylanders, Dead, that's a dead mm. franchise, Tony Hawks, Dead franchise, King's Quest, Prototype dead, Geometry Wars dead. Ah, King's Quest is again dead. I did enjoy Skylanders King's dead. Quest uh, when I was younger. Yeah, but the problem is that they've Clip never the... kind of monopolized on it. Yeah, and they could have expanded upon it, and you yeah. could have had sequels and spin-offs. And, and... and you know what they for this? They've done it episodic, like a Telltale with King's Quest. I don't like mm. that. I... For the long and short of it is, is that if you look at that, and we go to pull up Bethesda, yep. uh, Bethesda.net, let's see what Bethesda's got, yeah? And they bought this, so what was it, four, seven? Did they buy for seven? Seven billion? So we've got a Bethesda, at the moment they're showing off new games, so just going to the games title, yeah? Mm. Starfield, Redfall, Danny, haven't you heard that's of Doom not... Eternal, so you've got Doom there. That's not showing that that's not showing because I was still on have... Yeah, I know. Sorry, I pressed the right because I've got it on the tab. I've got it done by tab. The Bethesda. There we go. So, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Let's bring up Bez. Let's bring up Bezzy. There we go. So, can we see yeah. Bethesda? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, I'm just going to turn that one off there just to give us a space. So, Starfield, new game coming out. Redfall, probably new game coming out. Doom Eternal. Popular game, uh, Fallout 76, popular game, Deathloop, new game, Tokyo, uh, Ghostwire, new game, mm. uh, Elder Scrolls, popular, even though the online one's a bit cack, another mm -hmm. Elder Scrolls one, and it's got all games there, and we click on all games, in comparison to what we saw on the Activision site, what are we going to see? We've got a ton of Elder Scrolls, Rage 2, Prey, Wolfenstein, well, we've got a ton, look at the games catalogue that you've got, oh, when you bought the Festa versus Prey. the games Evil Within games, yeah, yeah, Evil Within. But look at the games catalog. This was a wiser buy than I think. I think they pissed their money out the wall. 
How can the you more spend I look that? at it, I think how can you spend that when you spent this on this and got all of these fucking titles? Pardon my language. It's I think lot, they spunk. Man. They have probably pissed their money out the wall. I don't. I don't know actually like, what they're getting. Maybe maybe there's something about this Blizzard side that we just don't know about. That's As I, I said, think. it's 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 the back catalog part. Yeah. What's his mission was well, interested in the back catalog and the IPs. So it could be the fact that he's IP farming it, and he's going to get he's going to get Activision and split it into to studios and go right. You're going to make this game. 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 And someone somewhere is going to bring back bring bring back Guitar Hero. Yeah. <laughs> Remember well, Guitar Hero? My little just, plastic thing. That was Activision. I've just been uh, quickly going to the Blizzard uh, website, and so they've got. Obviously, Diablo 2 Resurrected has just come back out. But then you've got Overwatch mm -hmm. 2, Overwatch, World of Warcraft. Overwatch 2 is not out, so that's coming no, up. No, yeah, yeah. It's coming up. Um, I believe World of Warcraft is still the number one MMO uh, through subscription. No, it's not. Base. It's Final Fantasy. It was Final Fantasy grew so game. much. You don't have to pay for Final Fantasy. No, you have to buy not, not Final. Yeah, you do. You have to buy the Final Fantasy one. I got it for free. It's and the I played it. Um, no, 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 because you're not playing the same Final Fantasy that the people are playing. I played Final what was Fantasy it called? 14. Final what Fantasy was it 14, called? got it for free on the PlayStation 4, uh, sorry, PlayStation 5. They have stopped selling, you can buy it, but I think Final there is Fantasy 4 online, and then you get they had to suspend sales and limit the pro uh, products, yes, because they had so many people on their systems, yes. But that's I don't not know. A problem that, that, that's not a problem that you're going to whinge about. We've got so many no. customers, that we can't funnel them through our shop. No. Uh, yeah. I don't know the comparison between World of Warcraft and, and Final Fantasy fourteen. But then you've got Hearthstone. I've well, heard Hearthstone's quite a big... Hearthstone's big dead. Uh, Heroes dead of Dead as a can of spam. That's Warcraft been killed off. <laughs> Uh, oh, let me tell you all the franchises that have been murdered. <laughs> uh, Diablo 4 due to come out. Diablo Immortal, which I believe is the mobile game. Diablo 3 is still going. Starcraft 2. Starcraft Remastered. And that is on their website. They've got a Blizzard arcade collection, but I, that might be older stuff. Okay. That is just a few days old, that announcement. Mm -hmm. So but, uh, as there's, I said, there's bits, but it's not, not the same. It's not. The it's not same the same as a Bethesda. Bethesda. No. So and it's not the same price as Bethesda too. So all right, this is this. Is, if they want to win over the gate, right? If they Microsoft want to win over the gaming gaming audience, yeah. What they need to do is do the following: they do their transfer over. Bobby Kotek, who is the the shit who's in charge of Activision, who's responsible for all the horrible microtransactions and all the, all the all the crappy games being killed off left, right, center, and literally just putting all these game studios onto Call of Duty. Mm. Yeah, the horrible shit, who's also responsible for all that, as I said, the HR stuff at Blizzard and not doing anything and letting Blizzard go to shit because he hasn't really bothered managing them. Yeah, that person, all right, that person, what they want to do with him is they turn around and say the following, you're fired. <laughs> no payout for you. Bye-bye. And... As a pub as publicity stunt, that would make everyone in the gaming industry really happy. Yeah. <laughs> Under his tenure, he has done fuck all apart from lining his own pockets. And apparently in press statements and bits too, he is bitching and moaning that he no longer gets to cream off the top and he will no longer be able to cream off the top of, uh, of their profits. All right. Let's talk about something a little nicer. Um... Yeah, that's the. Uh, a word's too much for you. Then you should follow us on Instagram. We put pretty pictures out. Thanks. I've been putting videos out at the moment. Just, just silly little things. Um, did you see the video from Time Splitters that I put out with the ladder? Oh, I might. You liked it? it? Yeah, I think I did. I can't remember what happened though. It's the right. Oh. Okay. I yeah, watch right. It. Fucking hell, you didn't watch it. You didn't watch it. Because what it got is, yeah, you've got two people at the top of a ladder, you got this bird with a short skirt on and this dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, she looks down the hole and she hears this roar. Yeah. And she looks at the bloke and goes, You go first. The bloke then looks at her skirt and goes, Okay, then <laughs> it's great. It made me giggle for a good 20 minutes. 
Um, okay. Anyway, Death in Paradise. No, Keith, do you watch Death in Paradise? I used to, but I try not to watch stuff on the BBC iPlayer these days because, you know, that would involve supporting the BBC, which I don't. <laughs> that was good news um, that the, 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 the chart will be up in 2027. Yep. Mm. Sorry, but I, right. I believe in that... 2010. I believe the BBC has to radically change. Um, uh, it's a shame. But uh, no, I don't watch Death in Paradise for a while. Is um, Ralph Little leaving? Did I read that somewhere? I don't know. I don't. Okay. I haven't read anything about him leaving. Uh, right, fair I enough. haven't. I haven't read of it. I mean, uh, you know, since the first series, and he's been in it longer now. He has grown on me mainly because in the first series, it was literally every single scene. He's sitting there itching, scratching, talking about allergies. Blah, blah, blah. But now it's not so often. It's maybe once a once an episode now. So they they don't have to keep ramming it down your throat. And that's better. So much better. And yeah, and the stories are pretty good. All right, so this Friday it's great because I phoned my mum up. Yeah, and I went, "Mum, you're right. Yeah, she's right." Because how's Dexter doing? Because all right, he's come down with these. He's getting over his COVID and whatnot. First negative test, blah blah blah. And then she goes, "I've got to go. Well, I've got to watch Death in Paradise." So that's funny because that's what we're about to watch. Um, I watched it, and it was um, so. Dude, the mystery was this guy had jumped out of a plane. And somehow managed to get stabbed in the back of the neck mid mid flight and land <laughs> in the tree. And that was the mystery. And I love it when they do that that kind of that kind of mystery. Because it was like yeah. my I said to my wife, well, it's obvious what's happened. What he's landed, got stabbed in the back of the neck, and someone's dropped him there. Because there's no way, unless the pilot has got a special gun that fires knives into the backs of people's necks from the plane. Yeah. yeah? But he would have had to have fired the knife after he pulled the chute. So he got so he jumped out of the plane, pulled the chute, and then someone knifed him in the back of the neck. <laughs> and it was great. I love I love those kind of like C V kind of detective mystery things where you're just trying to go. It's gotta it's gotta be he landed. It's gotta be that he landed. The the and only watched. thing that the person who killed him could have done better to get away with it was as just before he as he's pushing him out take the knife out as he's pushing him out because it would no because if he takes then, the knife out all the pressure comes out and it just pisses blood everywhere but he's out of a plane he's falling no 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 but if he does it blood's getting in that plane i can fucking guarantee that guy down to you that blood's getting on that plane or it's going to be on the fucking bits at the back yeah you're getting that you'll get it will piss blood out yeah because it, it's one of the things it's one thing i i, I but well, there are like things you could have done. If you get, you if could you have uh, wrapped a little rope, a little bit of string or something around the base of the knife. As he's knife out, gun. You string, and then knife you, gun. Then Nigel. you hold it, reel it back in. Because you're an autopilot, you reel it back in, undo the thing. A few, just uh, 30 seconds later, drop it, and it'll be somewhere. And they're not going to find that because it won't be in the vicinity. And then he would have got away with it. I'll be honest with you. I probably would have jumped him out of the plane and just hope he landed on his back. Yeah, because if he'd have landed on his back, he have been the, 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 he died from, clearly he died from the impact because he's a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> but he had got um, away it's from it. Great. <laughs> it's 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 it, it's um yeah. It it was a it was a good one. I like it. I like the um. Uh, I think the new sergeant as well. She's quite good. Mm, yes. Apart from she duck walks when she runs. Yeah. Uh, when she, she runs, run she's in a game. She goes like this. It's a weird running style. Um, it's always it's, like that. Whenever they're chasing somebody, I always find it strange that they can never catch them almost straight away. Um, because the way when whoever someone's running away, they run so slowly so slowly i could catch them within 10 meters and you look at the police officer they're constantly chasing people around you'd think they'd be good at this by now they've got stamina though these people mm. they've got stamina they can run 
not just the criminals, but the cops too. They can. Did they you, got... the, the other thing with with Death in Paradise is, did you notice how that they had a Christmas Day Death in Paradise? We didn't have a Christmas yeah. Day Doctor Who, nope. but Death in Paradise will do a Christmas fucking day. They one. did. It was a good with one. Danny John Jules, the cat from Red Dwarf, who was originally in it as yeah, um, yeah, Dwayne Myers, or whatever his name was. And that was a really he came good back, and that was great. I liked seeing that. Was, that was that. good, and it. And it's not, it's not, it's it's not too involved. You can just sit back there. There's, there's no foul language. Just, yeah, it just keeps no you guessing. Boobs, unfortunately, just keeps you guessing. Like, um, yeah. sometimes they are particularly uh, tricky and throw a few red herrings in there. But um, sometimes because they're throwing the red herrings in, they'll double back, and it is the red herring that they sort of put you back to. So you're thinking, oh, it was that, but last time it was a red herring, and they sort of tried chucking you off scent. And that's I like that. Mm. Um, so it's a nice, fun, light entertainment. Even though it's called Death in Paradise, it's not gory at all. Uh, no, it's not. It's and it is. It's light entertainment. I, I, I like Don. I love Don Warrington's character. Oh, he, is he's he the such, commissioner? Uh, he, he's learned to play the fuck. Yeah, he's the commissioner. He's he's the guy who's learned to play the game so long yeah. that he he knows. All the people, and it's um, like kind of if he upsets yeah. anyone with any money, it's usually a commission one of the commissioner's friends. Isn't yeah. he the only original character left in yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, him and the Catherine. bar owner, Catherine from the bar. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's literally, um, Ralph Little's character. Um, sometimes when the commissioner says, Oh, well, um, I've been contacted by this and this person that he's he's my friend, and Ralph would just blurt out, of course you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hang oh, on a second. That yeah, makes sense. The golf, the golf thing. Yeah. We're just trying to teach him to play golf. So you've got Neville, who is who is a, a gangly, uh, uncoordinated fella. Yeah. I know that I, it's funny because I know Matey Bob can play golf. The actual actor can play golf because he's been spotted around the local golf courses near me. Um, Because uh, he used to play for a football team too. Uh, anyway, um, he, um, what do you call it? He was teaching him to play golf. And the, the commissioner to Neville, who's the, the, the detective inspector, yeah, is, the, is a disapproving father and his son. Yeah. And that's how they play out. Yeah. So he's like, no, you're doing it wrong. Put your legs <laughs> And he's, like, he's come round the back of him. Commissioner's come round the back of him, holding him, going, right, settle in. <laughs> <laughs> and he's it's going, so inappropriate. Oh. It's like, <laughs> yeah. And he is um, the, the inspector sitting there going, uh, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> He's going, shut uh, up and sir, figure that I don't think we should be doing this. <laughs> now swing like this. <laughs> it, the it was... Uh, it's, it's, the bare, it's the only thing, it's the only thing I, I, I religiously watch on the BBC. And if, and, if and, the BBC... Yeah. Um, what do you call it? If the BBC stops... Um, and they go to a, 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 a Netflix style model. I will pay for them for the month that Death in Paradise is on, mm. and then they'll go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because um, I, you know, I I enjoyed the crap out of that. The, um, actually, at the moment, the only TV show where I'll I'll record it and watch it the next day, uh, which is the best I can do, um, <laughs> is Death in Paradise. Every other program doesn't get that. On me well so, line of duty did but that's that's a rarity these days no, so. that's not on that often so mm. that's the thing with i have to admit i'll watch it the next day when i and do watch, watch it with the kids it's it's fluffy tv but it's good fluffy tv isn't it yeah it's fluffy tv um, and i don't it's worth... think there's any it doesn't feel like any of this woke nonsense is permeating into this program it doesn't feel like that at all people have their strength in the team and they play to do, those strengths do you, know do you know what i find funny about it yeah is, is you look at the makeup of everyone on the island and there are too many british tourists that are dying on that island or there should be a good chunk of americans that are dying it's a bit on like midsummer's well. murder isn't it everybody in midsummer is dead how the fuck do they regain the population house I mean, prices are drugs. exceptionally Count, cheap council Keith. tax must be way down in that place <laughs> no no yeah. it must be it must be through the roof that man they pay for fucking detective and forensic agencies true, true. Uh, okay <laughs> all right so what we'll do is we're going to leave but it there and the, we will the biggest, join the you biggest thing is um from that last episode though gareth um we're losing 
we're losing uh, Florence. We don't but, know how oh, long they for. But at the end of the episode, they showed clips of her in Jamaica. Uh, and so I think, although she's going to go undercover in another country, I think they're actually going to focus on her a little bit and her undercover story. Yeah, to give it a bit, make it a little, little bit, bit more dynamic, mix, mix, thing, mix things up. Ooh, Be good. Sorry. Yes. Looking forward and to it. And on that note, time to say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. We'll see you in the next podcast. Bye-bye.